Hey everybody, uh, today I want to do something different. Uh, I'm going to talk really fast because it might be a, quite a long video. Someone on Steam asked me, how did you get into solo dev? How did you get to make the Falconeer? Where do your skills come from? How, how, how does that work? So what's your journey? So I thought, yeah, well, let's talk about that. And I've talked about that in the past in interviews, but today let's try and find some videos and show all the games I've made. Because this my journey is kind of weird. Because when I graduated together with some other people in 2001, 2000, there wasn't a major publisher or a major studio in the Netherlands where I'm from. Uh, there was no infrastructure there. We'd done an art school. Uh, we, did, we, we knew nothing. We had no idea. The iPhones hadn't been even released. Steam didn't, uh, didn't exist yet. <laughs> Um, so the, all of us, we w so we just went out and we were able to make web games using an ancient engine called Virtuals that was sort of like Flash. You could embed it in a browser, and we just go around asking people, "Hey, can you pay us to make video games?" So we did for 15 years everything and anything, uh, anything anybody wanted for advertising, lots of educational stuff, lots of uh, medical stuff. Even it was weird. Uh, and it was fun. So we did a lot of fun games. One of the first games people might have heard about, remember if you're in from Northern Europe, is called, a game called Pizza Cooter, where you deliver pizzas in this sort of on a scooter, on a, like a little moped. Uh, it was 3D open world, driving around delivering pizzas. It was for the promotion of a theater show that would go into schools and do theater on mopeds, which was like a sort of a stunt, uh, stunt crew. Uh, and then that went viral because that would be put on websites with banners next to it, of which we earned nothing. Uh, so made no money, but the game got got on Nickelodeon and stuff without us ever, you know, because they would just link to it. This was the wild days of the internet. And so that's that. I don't, I couldn't find video of it. But if Pizza Courier, if that rings a bell, yeah, that's. So uh, uh, we did that kind of stuff, and I found one game from a little later, which is interesting to show some of the educational stuff. Uh, we did, and this is a game called Medical Investigator. So you play a forensics investigator uh, solving crimes and finding like blood samples and forensics evidence. We did this for an organization that would go into schools, high schools, to promote sciences, uh, you know, get people to go become a scientist or a physicist or, you know, medical, you know, just promote beta sciences. Um, and we made this game. They would find, uh, we worked together together, uh, so you'd play this game for half an hour on school, on a CD-ROM. Um, and then you'd find this evidence. Let's say you found 10 blood samples. Then the after an, half an hour on school, you would go to your laboratory um, uh, classroom. And they would. this organization would come on with a box of blood samples. And you'd get together with your classmates, do real tests on these blood samples to determine which one was of the killer. So you do, and then you go back into the game and fill in the information and unlock the case. Uh, they brought in like a windshield that got shot at, uh, and then you had to calculate where it was shot at, and in the game that led to different pos uh, you know positions and different pieces of evidence, and you'd know oh that was the bubble gum from the killer. Um, insane. Uh, Janus, who's now the CEO of Little Chicken Game Company, made all these uh, drawings. I made all these environments and. Uh, uh, together we created this this game. So it's a really cool. I don't think I've ever heard about an educational game that this did that you know that combined in school practical science experiments with a video game. Uh, so super super cool experiment. Um, I'll see if we can get show script ahead interviews. You'd walk around in these film noir type environments like here's a, a, a shooting in a very Dutch setting uh, or a pub. So that's 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 uh, some of the educational games we did, uh, and you got to remember. At, 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 I think at this case, get the studio was like 15 people, and we do 10 games like this a year if we were lucky, uh, you know, for advertising science. And so in, I was there for 15 years or more, so that's like 150 games. It, 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 some of them were simple like quizzes, some were like complex like this. But this is one I found which just looked super cool. Um, the other uh, type of games we do, we would work for brands. So let's see if I can uh, find a video of that. Uh, so one game we do, did was for KLM, which is a Dutch airline, um, the big blue planes. Uh, and we, they existed for 100 years. Uh, and we made a game where, uh, like a tycoon game on mobile, on phone and iPad, where you'd 
uh, play as an airline manager, basically. And you'd grow your airline from the ancient days of biplanes all the way to modern jets and the future even. Uh, designing your airport, you know, laying down routes, setting the price, stuff like that. A really great game. I think it did really well on iPad back in the day. So I don't know when this is, the uh, iPad so 2012 or something, I don't know. And you saw some gameplay there, so making the... So that's uh, that's also the type of game we do. I have another um, video of something which I think is fun. Let me see if I can get it there. Oh, it's already playing. Oh, so this is uh, sorry for the. G this is a game um, where uh, for a supermarket, and they did these uh, sort of campaigns where they uh, kids could collect stickers of dinosaurs and stick them in a a book. Every and they, every ten bucks worth of shopping. I'm gonna turn down the volume a little bit. Uh, uh, for every ten, they would uh, you would collect a dinosaur. So we turn these into three D environments, and then uh, in an app for every card you unlocked, and you had to scan it with AR with your phone. This is really relatively recent, so I think 2018, 17, something. Um, you would uh, uh, scan it and get that dinosaur, and you in the store you could buy a or get I don't remember a, a cardboard so like a cardboard VR kit you know with those lenses and then you put your mobile phone in it uh, and then play the uh, 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 play the, uh, the the game and look around at these dinosaurs uh, something is talking to through my video stream uh, uh, it's an interview with Jr. Tolkien playing because YouTube doesn't stop uh, so sorry for that. Uh, but that's also a type of game we did. So just uh, for supermarkets, anything to survive, really. Let's see if I can. But we also, you know, we were always trying to get into entertainment games. So um, let's see if I can find. So one that, uh, oh, here's a making of. So so this is a, uh, let me, I'm just not good at this. So here is a, a video of Wrecked, and this was a prototype. So this was made by Yannick van der Berg, who's a designer at Little Second Game Company. And it's like, uh, the pitch is Tony Hawk with cars. So you flip them and then you get multipliers with a little bit of a pinball effect as well. And this was the prototype. And then uh, they asked me to do some of the technical art for that uh, and, and sort of uh, uh, beef up the, uh, let's see if I can find that. Uh, wrecked and they're coming out with a sequel, I think, which you can probably also wish list wrecked to. Uh, uh, let's see. Ah, here's the launch trailer for Xbox, which is a very pretty version. So, here's the, the Xbox trailer for wrecked. So, uh, if you can take from a prototype, I went in and I changed all the I added a system that would, together with the designer, where every time you hit a multiplier in the game, the colors of the arena would change. So that was my I did all the special effects, all the you know all the little visual flourishes on it. Uh, but mostly it's it's about the coloring and just you know and the lighting of the thing. So you can see how something grows from a mobile style prototype to something that looks quite good. I think uh, this did really well. You can wreck two is going to be awesome. It's super addictive. It did really well on Android and iOS. Was app of the day for Apple and stuff. Uh, a really lovely nine minor sort of indie game uh, we did with the team. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's that we, we did this on the side, and at some point, uh, uh, we uh, I'm going to be silent now. I'm going to pause it for a little bit. We pitched this to Sony uh, for PlayStation VR one. So uh, and it's a music creation tool and it's a sequencer. So uh, have a look and see if you can understand what uh, what it's about. And I have to press play.
So that's that's uh, called. It was called Beambox back in the day. It was basically a sequencer, and you'd have this light pulse, and every time it hit one of those little cubes, a sample would play, and put enough of those samples one behind the other, and you get a classic linear sequencer. Uh, but you could split that signal and loop it back, so you get get music loops, and then you could put beats in it. At you know the size of the loop is the is the tempo of the beat. So it's a visual sequencer toy in VR. Uh, let's see if we can actually uh, uh, get go to YouTube and find what's Sony accepted this and uh, released it. Uh, so that was cool. We got uh, published by uh, SEE, which is Sony uh, uh, Sony. London, uh, let's see, uh, let's. so this is uh, what the end product, so uh, I made that prototype with the team and this is where uh, a very talented art director, you know, went with it and they redid, redid all the art uh, and I was creative director on this project. And the, but the core idea was by Senna de Jong, who's one of the co-founders of the company, the entire splitting. So this is what ended up getting released, which I think you can still buy on the PlayStation Store, but you know, it's not supported by PlayStation VR 2. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, so that's, uh, you can sort of see the evolution from something fairly simple to what happens when you get involved with a major publisher or platform like Sony. And it had like effects and mixers and you could really DJ. Uh, sort of mix different beats you'd pre it was an insane project uh, really quite proud of this one wasn't a massive hit uh, story of my life you make stuff you try it out and then uh, it doesn't uh, get anywhere so that's what we did at Little Chicken uh, and uh, I'll also show you a failure from another entertainment which was somewhere between entertainment and work for hire which was uh, uh, let's see if I can do this load the video uh, let's uh, wrestling with so uh, this was a trailer for a game we did called blaze where someone wanted us to make a game hired us to make oh oh Uh, so uh, someone paid us for, uh, I, it's a shame I can't, you can uh, to, uh, make this game and promote uh, weed as uh, a green building material and just general, you know, uh, uh, promote, you know, weed as being something else. And we wanted to make something sort of sustainable and take that and then it was about, you know, uh, using hemp as a building. It was all that. Uh, and when we made this game about this corporation brainwashing everybody with VR jobs, uh, and then the only way to sort of snap out of it was to smoke some weed and join off the grid communities with solar panels and windmills and stuff like that. Uh, it was super cool. Uh, maybe I can find another video of it. Uh, uh, you can buy this on Steam. I think a hundred people did. So it 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 was the, the example case of a uh, of a, a of a. Uh, of a, how do you call it, of a game failing on Steam because we didn't properly understand marketing. Um, let's see if we can find the trailer for it. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, but it was fun, but you can, I, I, the reason I'm playing, you can see some of the origins of Bulwark in this. Some of that art, tech art, taking that style I've been developing for the last 10 years. It's also seeped through in the pro commercial projects, uh, projects we were doing. Is 
So uh, uh, I, I, did, I just like the trailer for it. Uh, um, uh, let's see if we can... Uh, so it, it, it's a kind of fun um, uh, uh, little game. Nobody played it, but, you know, it's like the origins of, you know, where you experiment with style and I love strategy games and with control systems, where you just learn. You, you, you Basically, failing is learning, uh, uh, which I, I feel fail. I feel like I fail every day, uh, but I'm also learning. So, um, so that's what we were doing at the studio, but at some point during these last couple of games, uh, which I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe seven years ago right now, uh, I figured out that I am of the chaotic alignment um, type of human, uh, the chaotic creative. Uh, so that means I'm great at making video games and just sitting around and doing whatever the fuck I want and then something poops out. I really suck at going, uh, here's your Jira task list for today and uh, I put all your user stories in the right, uh, all that shit. I couldn't manage a team if my life depended, but I can barely manage myself. Uh, so I wasn't a great manager. Uh, I'm not a bad person, but uh, you know, if you're looking, what do I do today? What do I look tomorrow? Am I doing my work right? I wasn't, you know, I'm not a manager. I'll never be a manager and I fucking hate all that stuff. I like working with other people as equals. I think that works best, not as some, you know, and what happens is you get rather, uh, how do you call it, dominant because things are going your way and go, uh, you get frustrated and you become a frustrated manager, which is even worse. So I burned out naturally, um, I figured out I, I, I couldn't, some st stuff happened where I, I, I figured out I couldn't do that. Uh, one of the things that w happened is I got into modding. So let me show you that. Uh, and I, uh, uh, oh wait, let, I'll have to show you a couple of things. Um, so one of the jobs we did, um, let me, let me, is we made a game for the Efteling, which is a local theme park. If you're in Northern Europe, you might've heard of it. Uh, it's really cool. It's one of the prettiest theme parks you'll ever feel. And they wanted an online RPG to go with their TV series and a re real world show with knights and fantasy and uh, enemies. So we made this, uh, this is just, we made an RPG like a, a, a Diablo-esque clone, really simple for small kids and young kids um, uh, in Flash, in Flash 3D. So that's a software engine. Flash couldn't do 3D, but there were, what, people had libraries for it and brand like dog shit. Uh, and it didn't have any advanced features. So uh, you can see it's 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 super, super simple 3D uh, uh, graphics. Uh, I think we'll get an enemy here. Um, uh, it's it's in your browser and you had spells and inventory. And it had all these it had all these great um, systems uh, that some of the team made um, to make uh, an RPG. And that had like a level editor and an item editor. It had all this great stuff. And after a while, I got really curious when I was stating, playing Skyrim. I went, oh, this is the best thing I've ever played. This amazing Skyrim and modding and stuff. Oh my God. And I got curious about how the big boy tools work. How, you know, a triple A studio sets up their tool sets. So I opened up the creation kit and started modding. So uh, I will show you the mod. This is, it used to be, it's it's not a great mod. It's just visually very interesting. Uh, it's just me learning. So, uh, uh, but it's, it's it become a reasonably famous uh, mod uh, for Skyrim. Let me go there. It's called Moon Path to Elsewhere. And it's the jungle mod for Skyrim. So if you've seen any jungle mod, they're using my assets. It's all based off this. But it, it was, in all likelihood, the first mod for Skyrim that changed things around like this. Um, there's even rumors somewhere that I, 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 I was working on this mod before the creation kit came out, which is nonsense. This was done in the creation kit. Uh, uh, um, uh, this... I, I, a video of myself. Okay, so uh, uh, that's not. I didn't. I just used the creation kit. So I opened it. I think it was January or something, and people were putting stuff in the uh, Steam Workshop, and there weren't a lot of mods. Um, and I went around looking for artwork to how to get my own art in Skyrim. 
Um, so I was figuring out the systems, and then I found some tools called, I think, NIF Replacer or something. That's the you know the very special file format for 3D files. And because uh, the Bethesda had built the tools for Fallout, and it's all the same engine basically, there were tools that worked. You could replace some of the static assets, and I got to replacing some of the trees with palm trees I accidentally still had from some other project, which looked good, except everything was stuck in snow. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and I didn't want snow, so I, 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 I fooled around with uh, the creation kit engine. Um, and I figured out, uh, oh, I figured out uh, that if I made the snow green, I could have moss. And if I made the snow yellow, I could have sand. So I started making, the first thing I did was a player home. I think it took me a week, so it came out really fast, uh, which is the one you start at the start. Uh, it was partially uh, pre already existing ferns and stuff and added my own green assets and my tricks to make everything green. And that just cascaded into, you know, dinosaurs. That's the player home, by the way. Uh, it's got Khajiit and it's got an airship and then uh, the airship doesn't actually move but it's like a loading screen to go to these different places in the Skyrim world uh, and it went completely uh, I, I think eight months I just modded the fuck out of Skyrim uh, made air battles and you can see also the genesis here of the stuff I like um, so that's 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 uh, and there was it was fantastic because there was a community people come in on steam and comment i love this i hate this people want to do do voices and writing and turn it into a community effort it was i think maybe the, the in my did i was doing this in my burnout this is what kept me sane i guess or you know motivated i just i had an escape and it involved something people loved which wasn't you know uh, when you do work for hire you're always working for somebody else's money so if someone is paying for you, so you're a subservient, yes sir, no sir, that's that's because they're paying, they're paying the bill. You have to do it on time. But I was, you know, free and fuck if I was gonna run with it. So that mod went crazy. It's still featured in lists from PC Gamer as one of the best Skyrim mods, which is ridiculous. There's better mods. But it was the first one to take a jungle. And even if you look at the mod, a famous one called the, I think the airship Deva Vesa, they asked to use this model I made. And that was the beginning of their airship where you can fly a heavily modified version of my first airship around Skyrim. How fucking insane is that? So that went all over. Uh, millions of people downloaded it and it made me go, hmm. Maybe, maybe uh, I should become an indie game developer. So in the midst of that, and so in burnout, uh, and, that, and, and that's this is literally a process that took years. Uh, uh, you know, realizing I wasn't fit for studio work, I preferred making things alone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and I would make this game. Um, I spent years on this. It's called Oberon Scored, and you could, this is truly the genesis, genesis of the art style for the Falconeer. You can see even see some of the assets. You know, that dragon is the weaver from the Falconeer and Bulwark. The trees are all over Bulwark. So I'm still reusing assets from this, uh, but it was the first time I wanted to do something simple, not that sculpted stuff I had to do for Skyrim, something fast. And I made this game about sort of... Uh, uh, like a sort of mini RTS and you would claim this, you would defeat these creatures and then you take their soul. You can see the hand grabbing out of the screen. Uh, oh, I died. Um, uh, let's let's see if I do have another video of this, of Overall Squad. Maybe, oh, on. Uh, so you would, and these creatures you could uh, then, resp once you've taken their soul, uh, You would claim, add them to your army, and uh, 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 you grow them. You you'd make them uh, how do you call it stronger uh, and and bigger, and you you have to farm resources and stuff like that, and grow your army and clear the map. But actually, the game, if I'd finished it, would have been about that. You figure out if you don't enhance these creatures because they were like tortured souls. Uh, uh, you know, the darker their soul, the darker the creature they become. And if you took away their powers, they, in the end, they turn into a little sheep. 
and you could rescue the sheep and the sheep could you know move on past purgatory so pretty dark game all in all it's quite colorful but dark there's a theme here i guess i like i like i uh, i don't like cozy stuff but i you know i do like uh, beautiful visuals and stark stuff so uh, that's Oberon's Sword. I never finished it. Uh, when I look at it now, it's still there's a lot of pain in there. It's it's all quite dark and moody. Um, it's it's I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll try and open the code in Unity one day and see I can finish this or just release it as is, just you know for people to see. Uh, 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 but it was sort of a, let's see if I can go further. But you can see the you, even the the wheel that pops up. Let's see if I can. Uh, and these are all the sold. The statues in Bulwark are the mythology from this game. So the people in Bulwark on the Ursi believe this is their afterlife. So the creatures uh, uh, become uh, like the whale and stuff. So it's uh, it's 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 a foundational game for me, uh, and it was very pretty. So it even got a little bit of attention, but it never got released. Uh, let's see if I can go back to. Uh, so that's 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 Oberon scored, and let's see if I can find. Uh, uh, and then, so and then, at some point you come out of a burnout. It takes a while. Uh, you change your life around. Uh, and I wanted to make something uh, more, you know, uh, positive to deal with that. Uh, and at one point, I, one of the problems with Oberon Scored uh, is that it was like a strategy game. So the fun, once you, you know, just. The, everything needed to be there the story the balance the level the creatures every, for it to be fun it was a lot of work and it was it didn't have like a fun core feel um uh, which is sort of um yeah how would you explain that uh it did, every time after three years i would pick it up and it wasn't fun and at some point i looked at it i can't get this to be fun why am i let's do something else um and i thought what do i enjoy you know, you go back because I'm dealing with, you know, who am I and uh, why am I so chaotic and why am I always fidgeting and stuff. You go back to your childhood and well, what's the games I love? I loved X-Wing and TIE Fighter and uh, Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe and stuff like that. I like flying games, Aces of the Pacific. So that's the, so I went, I'll make a flying game. So that's how, um, uh, I don't know what this, uh, this is a early version of the Falconeer. Uh, I made. I don't have the actual video of the first version. It's just those assets from Oberon's Court put into um, into a. Uh, and this is you can see the water isn't. It's this is literally a prototype version interface. The water is old, uh, but it had that. I flew around, and and I knew okay, this is nice. You know, the flying itself is nice, and every time I picked it up over the course of six months where I made a demo or even longer, uh, I enjoyed the flying. It always felt good. And then, you know, you have something where you can go, okay, this, every time you're working on something and you pick it up and you can feel if you fucked it up or if it's still good, is a great something to keep working on. And then it just expanded for there. And that became the Falconeer and uh, 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 all of that. Let's see if I can uh, uh, find another... Uh, Buccaneer X, X oh nine. So what happened? I was still partially at the studio, but not working full time because um, I was, you know, stuck in this burnout uh, and working my way through it. And at some point, I'll, I'll just uh, game scene. So this is the X oh nine team trailer. So that's the Microsoft their big showcase, and I got in there. So let's. Uh, let me pause and tell the story. So what happened? Um, uh, I sent in the demo you saw earlier, that really rough demo to something called Game Connection. You can see uh, for some awards. Um, they're in the upper left corner of the video. Uh, and that was during GDC 2018, I think, maybe. Uh, it was just a demo, and it's, I took my shot, and then got nominated. And they sent me two tickets to go to the Game Connection, which was next to GDC, and I... Uh, so I made a deal with Giannis at Little Chicken said, well, do you want a ticket for this fantastic biz dev event? I want to go too, and I can share maybe, you know, I'll pay my own ticket, but uh, I can, we can share a plane. He said, sure, sure. So we traded that. Uh, the tickets were very expensive normally. Um, so I got it there for cheap, and then I won two awards for uh, the Falconeer demo. 
uh, there up there, the little square game connection. Um, it was amazing. And then the next meeting was with, or I had a meeting with someone from Microsoft uh, and we talked about what do you want? I said, well, you know, I'm just myself. I prefer to have one home for this game rather than do every platform. It's too much. Um, uh, and I said, well, we're Microsoft. We did Crimson Skies. We did Flight. We have heritage with this. So this is a type of game doesn't get made often, but we respect that this is something we might have. So let's keep talking. So that kicked that. I met my publisher there, and that gave me the confidence to keep mo moving and eventually, you know, make a small deal with Microsoft, be part of that, X, you know, the the Xbox Series X launch title, um, and get the Falconeer made and and fully leave Little Chicken Game Company. Uh, uh, and, and you know, in a friendly manner, that they're still there. I'm still here. We're not involved on day to day, uh, but we're also there's no animosity there. Um, and this is the trailer. I think that is a good way to end that I made for XO19 with Sherry Diane, who's a, a musician I know, of jazz singer, made this custom song for it. So it's perhaps the best trailer I've ever made. I'll rewind it one more time. Saddest trailer ever, but uh, uh, I think that's that's you know that was the, that became the Falconer, and the, I think the XO19 with this trailer was maybe a year before the game actually finally got uh, came out, uh, and you can see see how much you know the progression, how much still needed to be done at that point for the game to be finished. I think there was eight months of development in that still, uh, and then make it for the new Series X and stuff like that, and that of course led to the bulwark, uh, and I'm now. It, deeply invested in this world i think the trailer the trailer why it's nice to end on that one is it's always also sort of illustrates um uh even you know with something that is that the, the, my games can't ever compete with triple a games i think i realized that reviews realize that gamers realize that you know you can't by yourself make a paradox a game that beats paradox or a game that beats you know, uh, Rogue Squadron or something, because they just don't have the means to it. But they have, because they are made by one person, they have their own sort of poetic identity, I think, that makes them tick and that uh, makes them original in a sense. Uh, so that's 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 how I got here. It's uh, been a very long journey of lots of, making just lots of games, uh, trying to survive, make enough money, to you know, pay the rent, uh, keep the company afloat, do all that uh, for 15 years, and then something happened where I did okay. I prefer making games by myself, or that's healthier for my sanity, for my mental health, uh, uh, and perhaps better for everybody else. Um, uh, into making something like the Falconeer, which also you know required several games like that Blaze or overall school, just to fail or me fail at making them before you realize what you can do and what you cannot do um 
so, so stuff like the minimalist interface and pool work is a response of having tried to make more complex interface and realize it's better if I go minimal because the, the poetic nature comes out better and I don't have to make things I'm not good at, which is, you know, super complex interfaces. Of course, you know, there's always some of that. Uh, and that's, you know, and you can see in Oberon's court how I started with using this textures art style and how that evolved in the Falconeer and then ultimately evolved into Bulwark. Uh, and it's now my signature as something you know, I, that keeps me making games that all work together and all the art fixed together. Uh, and that's you know that's where we end up today with Bulwark. So that's a little bit of my journey. I don't know if that's useful for anybody, but it, maybe it shows there's many ways to become an indie dev. Uh, and sometimes it takes a long time. Yeah? And if you're an indie dev, please don't take as long as I did because holy shit. Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever, whatever way gets you there and gives you the skills and the perseverance to, to make what you want to make, that's the right way for you. So I'm going to end on that and, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to try out the new bulwark, uh, naval command beta. I need lots of feedback doing daily updates. Give me the feedback, uh, and see you all soon in another video.